Hi. In this video, I want to explain how to apply Gauss's law to finding an electric field value for an infinitely long charged plate. So the plate is shown in yellow color, which is infinitely long, and it's charged in a positive way. So you see the arrows coming out of the plate. On the top surface of the plate, the arrows are coming out upwards. On the bottom surface of the plate, you can see the arrows coming out perpendicular to that and going downwards. Now we place a Gaussian cylinder to intersect that plate and to intersect the flux lines and the electric field. As you can see the text on this page, the lines of flux pass through the top end of the plate and the lines of flux on the bottom pass through the lower face of that cylinder. There is no line of flux along the direction of the plate. There is no electric field along the axis of the plate. And this is very important to understand that the lines of flux and the electric field vector will always be perpendicular to any surface area of a charged part. We will now derive the equation for the electric field. The length of the plate is infinite, so we let that go. We chose a Gauss cylinder of radius r. It's our choice, so we will stay with that. The length of our Gauss cylinder could be anything. It doesn't matter because the flux is only passing through the top and bottom phase. Even if we make it very long, the amount of flux passing through our Gaussian cylinder is not going to change. So the flux phi is equal to electric field strength E into surface area A and the area the, of the top face of our cylinder is pi r squared. So flux becomes equal to E into pi r squared going upwards. The flux going downwards again is passing through the lower face of the cylinder. So that's again equal to E into pi r squared. So we have a net flux passing through the Gaussian cylinder which is equal to flux outwards minus flux inwards which is phi minus of minus phi is equal to 2 phi. In any way it's intuitive that there is a 2 phi passing through top and bottom ends of our cylinder. So now equate the flux equal to q into 1 by epsilon 0 which is Gauss's law. So if we equate 1 and 2, you will get 2e into pi r squared is equal to q into 1 by epsilon 0. Therefore, we get the equation for e very neatly as q into 1 by epsilon 0 into 2 pi r squared. Conceptually, it's usual to express the charge q as a multiplication of a charge density into the area. So then charge density must be per unit area. So if you multiply, let's say, sigma into A, you will get back charge Q. Gauss's law becomes very useful because we cannot measure the area of an infinite plate. So we put in a cylinder of radius R, so we can certainly measure the area of our Gaussian cylinder, which is A is equal to pi R squared. The charge density sigma is applicable anywhere on that infinite plate, so it's also applicable for our Gaussian cylinder. So if we multiply sigma into pi r squared, we get the charge Q applicable to our Gaussian cylinder. Therefore, we can substitute this into the equation for the electric field E. And you can see that when we substitute that pi r squared, pi r squared will cancel and you will get the electric field E equal to sigma into 1 by 2 epsilon 0. So this is how the concepts help us to derive the equation for the electric field for an infinite flat plate. Uh, I hope that uh, this video really helped you to understand flux and electric field and thank you very much and have a great day.